The skill that you need to create detailed selections in Photoshop is at the heart of what gives you the power to create anything that you can dream of. To master this skill, you need to understand the relationship between selections, channels, and masks. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate these relationships and why they matter. Let's just do a quick review here of what selections are. There are several selection tools in Photoshop, and they're towards the top of the toolbar here. The second, third, and fourth are all tools for making selections. Marquee selections, uh, lasso or polygonal lasso, and quick select or magic wand. Selections give us the control to work on a very specific area of a photo while protecting all of the area outside of a selection. If I make a marquee selection across my image and go to my brush tool and start painting, you'll see that it only paints inside of the selection and the area outside is protected. But that's kind of silly because we would never really do this to our image. So I'm going to do a Command Z and then a Command D to deselect. Let's do something a little bit more realistic. I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool, zoom in on the eye here, and uh, draw out an elliptical shape to fit around the eye. And then I'll just uh, shift this into place here. I'm going to go up to Image Adjustments and go to Hue Saturation. If I change the hue on this, it changes only inside of the selection and the rest of it stays the original color. So I can give this bird a cool pinkish purple color eye. But I wouldn't do it this way because this is destructive. If I, I could do it this way with this selection is protecting everything outside of the selection and it's only changing the color inside, but it's actually changing the pixels. So I'm going to cancel out of this and instead I'm going to add an adjustment layer. I have a selection, so if I pick the hue saturation adjustment layer, I can do the same thing. I now can take the, the hue down, get back to the purple color that I want, and this is on its own layer, non-destructively. So we accomplish the same thing by starting with a selection. We either make an edit on the image which is protected, um, the areas outside are protected, or we start with a selection and we add an adjustment layer and that selection becomes a layer mask. So that's our first relationship between a selection and a layer mask. Let's take a closer look at what that is. I'm going to open my channels panel so that we can take a closer look at what's going on. I'll drag this over here so that we can see it nice and big. In fact, let's put the channel and the layers right next to each other. If you don't see your channels panel, go up to Windows, make sure that it's turned on right here. Every RGB image has four channels to start with. To make this more clear, I'm going to select just the bird layer, not the adjustment layer. And we'll see that that extra channel disappeared there for a second. I'm also going to zoom out so we're in full picture. So we have the RGB channel, which is all the colors. We have a red channel that makes up the red colors, a green channel, and a blue channel. And you'll see these channels in grayscale, but they look different because they represent the amount of color values in that image. So if I select back on RGB, we'll see the image in full color. Now what happens when I select the adjustment layer that has a mask, we see a fifth channel show up here. And we call these alpha channels. So when you add a layer mask to any layer, it's going to show up here in your channels panel if you have it selected. Extra channels in your channels panel are really saved states of active selections. So if I go back to the marquee selection and just draw out an oval shape here, Right now we have an active selection. We see this dotted line dancing around, sometimes referred to as marching ants. So that's an active selection. If I go up to select, save selection, I have an option to give it a name, so we'll call it oval. And when I say okay, it gets added to the channel panel. So this channel here is a saved state of the active selection. If I deselect with a Command D, 
I can take this channel, drag it onto the icon for Marching Ants, and it's again an active selection. Another shortcut to do that is to hold your Command or Control key and click right on it, and that'll load it into an active selection. Often the saved state or alpha channel state of your selection is a much better place to view it and edit it because it's pixel based and it contains 255 values of color from zero to black. But with a selection, all you get is dancing ants around. You get a line. You can't tell if you have any values of gray. Let's see what happens if we go up to select and we say modify and then feather. We can create a selection with a nice feather and let's put in 20 pixels here and say okay. Well did you see anything change in the selection? I saw it move out maybe one pixel but we really don't see visually what's going on. Let's go select save selection and, and call this feathered feathered oval and I'll say deselect with a command D and then we'll select the feathered oval so this is what that selection looked like with a 20 pixel feather this is what it looked like without the feather quite a difference but we couldn't visualize it when we were in the active selection state because a channel is comprised of pixels you have access to the same filters that you would have on your image. And often that's how I will make a nice soft feathered selection is instead of feathering the selection, I save it as a channel and then I blur the channel. Let's go up under filter, blur, Gaussian blur. With this method, I can see exactly what I'm getting here. We crank this way up, we can get a, a really, really soft feathered edge. And there's no way we would have seen this as a selection. So I'm going to go ahead and say, OK, now I have a really feathered oval. It, again, if I want to make this back into an active selection, I'll hold my Command key down because I'm on a Mac. You can see how my cursor changes. And it shows a finger with a marching ants icon. And I select on it. And now I have an active selection of this channel. We'll see that the line of the active selection is really the midway point of the feather. So it gets soft away from here to the outside and it feathers to the inside. And this line is just drawn down the middle. Let's switch back to view color. Right now we're just viewing this channel. But if I click on the color channel, we come back to seeing the color image of the bird. If I select the bird background layer and then click on the add layer mask icon we've just put a nice feathered oval mask around the bird. If you look back over here in the channels panel you'll see an additional channel that's been added. This is the layer mask that we added to the bird. Essentially it's just a duplicate of the feathered oval selection that I saved. So at this point, I don't even really need to keep the feathered oval channel because I can always get back to the same selection. I showed you that with the command key, you can click on a channel to load it into a selection. The same works for layer masks. So if I hold the command key down and click on the layer mask, that oval becomes an active selection. The same thing for this um, layer mask on the adjustment layer. If I hold my command key down and click on that, the selection that I had used to create this layer mask is now an active selection. So hopefully that, that helps explain the relationship between selections, channels, and layer masks.